Koti, my sister. Welcome back to another video. This video is definitely different than something I've done, I think, in the last five months. Um, so for those of you who are new to this channel, I used to do lock update videos. So I started my lock journey literally a year ago. Um, I think it's been maybe, maybe a week since I've hit my uh, year-long journey. I'm not quite sure. It might be a couple days. Um, but either way, um, so... I started out my lock journey about a year ago and I was doing like monthly updates up until about I want to say five or six months I think and then um, I started I did my last update I think was like at seven or eight months maybe ten one of those and then I said I wasn't gonna make any more because I was changing um, the direction of the channel and in the Facebook group shameless plug there is a facebook group for the dear koti youtube channel definitely um click the link in the description box and join because that's where we have a lot more interesting conversations <laughs> conversations that we don't always get to have on youtube obviously and we get to get more personal and things because youtube comments only let you do so much um but one of you asked me um if i could do a lock update and really just kind of share any advice for somebody who's looking to get locks or somebody who's in the beginning stages of getting locks um, and just kind of share what I've learned and at first I was going to just do a live video in the Facebook group and just keep it at that because I was really trying to separate you know this was me again trying to separate all the different areas of my life um, rather than realizing that the lock journey was part of my spiritual journey as well um, and it's part of who I am so I'm going to bring back lock updates and lock videos to the channel they're not going to be frequent things like i'm not going to do a lock video every month and update you guys on my locks um, my next one may be just be whenever i sh see some serious change um, so maybe six months from now maybe another year from now you'll see another lock video um, but i am going to go ahead and make the ones that i currently have private i'm going to make those public again so that you guys can watch those um, so I'm going to make a whole playlist so that you guys can find them all and be able to really watch the journey. Towards the end of this video, I am going to do a close-up kind of like 360 view of my locks now. And I'm going to have it side by side with my what my locks look like um, when I first started. So yeah, beyond that, I don't really have like anything planned as far as what I'm going to share. I'm just going to share from my heart as far as my advice. Um, because there's not much for me to share as far as how my locks are doing. I mean, they're progressing, um, they're growing, the length is, you know, slowly getting there now. Um, I've definitely learned a lot of things and that's really primarily what I'm here to share with you today. So for anybody who is looking to start locks, start a lock journey, get locks, um, or somebody who's in the beginning stages or even if you're somebody like me who's a year in um, Honestly, my biggest advice to you would be to Realize that it's a journey and it's a process um, The locks aren't going to appear overnight. They're not um, Going to look like anybody else's um, you're going to deal with your own individual problems with your locks, uh, whether that's something where you don't feel comfortable going through the awkward stages of growth and it challenges you to be more comfortable with who you are and being comfortable in your skin and, and not having to live up to society's expectations. Um, you know, you'll experience a lot of personal growth and yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I can really say is just realizing it's a process and it's a journey and it's not like anybody else's. And one of the things that I know a lot of us can get tripped up on is watching videos like these where you see somebody's locks and you're like, man, I wish I made mine thicker or I made mine thinner or I wish my locks looked like that. I can't wait till mine get to that length. And um, that was me in the beginning stages. I was watching a lot of lock videos and... I was experiencing what people call lock envy whenever I would watch those videos and so I found myself unsubscribing from a lot of lock channels and that was primarily for my <laughs> own self. Um, I'm slowly subscribing back to some of those channels now but um, 
it was just me realizing that I needed to be okay with myself and with my locks and how they look and that um, they're unique and that nobody else's locks will look like mine ever. So that is the biggest thing is really just understanding it's a process. It takes time for them to lock. I mean, I don't even think mine are fully locked at this point. Yes, they're locked, but they're not fully locked. I can still see texture from when I did a braid. Um, I did a braid slash twist um, starter lock. And so I can still see the texture in many of my locks. And I'm realizing that, hey, it's going to take my hair longer than a year to fully lock and fully have the texture pattern go away. Um, I have a lot of flat locks, um, you know, locks that tend to not be fully round. And that doesn't bother me. At first I was like, well, I kind of wanted them to be fully, you know, round and spherical, whatever you want to call it. Um, that was something that I had to learn that that was my particular locks. Some of my locks want to be flat, some of them don't. Um, realizing, you know, that the length will get there and that it's not going to just, you know, go from being up here to being, you know, down to my back in a couple days. You know, it's going to take a year or two or three or four. It's going to take time for my hair to grow. It also, this journey forces you, or at least it did for me, to look inward as far as how was I taking care of my body because, you know, with hair growth, your hair is literally a reflection of what's going on within your body. And so if your body is not healthy, your hair is not going to be healthy. It's going to be dry and brittle. It's not going to grow. It's going to continue to break off. Um, so those were things that I had to learn as well, was just realizing that, I mean, I keep saying this, but it's all a process and that having lots this is why I say it's personally, it's deeper than just hair. Um, you know, it's a spiritual journey because you are literally, I want to say, you, by the, I mean, as you go through the journey, you know, with each step that you take, you end up walking more in your spirit, in my opinion and in my own experience, um, each each step you know versus walking in your flesh and what I mean by that is you become more aware of yourself you become more aware of everything around you you become more aware of life and it's crazy to think that that all stems from hair but one you realize okay now you have all this time where normally you would focus on doing your hair every day and now you just wake up and go you know you may spritz some stuff like some water or some you know oil or whatever in your hair depending on whatever your regimen is but for me when I was a loose natural I would have to spend you know a lot of time doing my hair in the morning and half the time it never came out the way I wanted it to and so that freed up a lot of time where I wasn't spending time on my hair um, and I wasn't thinking about my hair I don't have super long wash days anymore and of course you know that'll probably change as I as my locks mature and grow and get longer um, but it freed up a lot of time for me but also like I said it forced me to really look inward and realize how was I taking care of my body was I feeding myself the right foods you know and so that my hair could be healthy um, some of you who have followed this journey for a while with me may have known that I've had a problem with itchy scalp and so it's forced me to kind of look inward and say well why am I having this issue is it something in my diet that I need to tweak and change? And so I've been, you know, going through this whole process of releasing the things that my flesh may have wanted me to do, you know, like being obsessed with styles and things and realizing that it's not about the style and that my hair actually just likes to be free and not touched. You know, any style, I, honestly, the only style I do is what you see right now. It pulled back. That is literally it. And I don't even, most of the time, it's just down. And that's just that's just how I wear my hair and that's what my hair likes and I'm comfortable that way um, so yeah ultimately realize it's a process and realize that it's really going to make you look within yourself it's going to make you question things about yourself it's going to you know make you change you're going to literally change and in my opinion and in my experience you end up letting go of the fleshly material things 
and you end up thinking more about the deeper things, the deeper meanings of things. You know, you start thinking about things like your health, things like your headspace and where are you at mentally. Um, you start really kind of loving yourself and loving people for who they are because once you begin to accept your own flaws, it's easier for you to accept the flaws in other people. And so I truly believe that I've become a better person just by going through this love journey because it forced me to really look inward and to not always, re not always, um, what is the word depend, I think, like, yeah, depend on my outward appearance. Um, so it's definitely been a deeper journey for me. So for anybody who's on a lock journey or thinking about a lock journey, I definitely say do it, but you have to do what feels right, obviously, to you. Um, but realize that it's a deeper journey. It's deeper than just hair. Yeah, you can do cute hairstyles and, you know, things like that, but it's deeper than that. Um, expect to have a lot of growth and don't get caught up trying to do things like everybody else. I definitely got caught up in trying to do things like everybody else for a while. You know, I was like, oh, well, everybody's using Dr. Bronner's Castile soap to wash their hair, peppermint to be exact. So I'm going to use that. And I did for a while. Um, and I still use Dr. Bronner's soap to do things like cleaning around my house. But I just found that I didn't really, it, it wasn't helping me with what I needed at the time. And so literally this whole year I've been dealing with having itchy scalp. And I haven't gone to a dermatologist or anything like that. And that's just my personal preference. Um, I really wanted to kind of force myself to look inward and figure out what the issue is and figure out how I can make a change to better it um, and heal it on its own. Um, and so I was somebody who was a diehard Dr. Bronner's user and I was using rose water on my scalp, um, sometimes with glycerin, sometimes not, and I was mixing my own. And you know, literally today, not even today, but over the weekend, um, I realized that it's not working for me and it's never been working for me um, and I also use things like I use the Trader Joe's tea tree um, shampoo which I absolutely love as far as how it makes my scalp feel and things like that but at the end of the day it wasn't enough to really help treat my scalp um, and I was like well everybody's using natural products for the most part you know I don't want build up I'm trying to do what everybody else is doing and it was like it finally hit me that I can't always do what everybody else is doing because everybody else is not me everybody else is not experiencing what I'm experiencing everybody else maybe isn't having you know itchy scalp with a lot of dandruff and um, buildup of oils on the scalp and things like that and you know so I was trying to really look at everybody else's regimen and see if it would work for me and rather than me just saying what is it that my scalp needs right now what is it that my hair needs right now and then doing that and so uh, over the weekend I tr I ended up going and I tried some head and shoulders and for the longest time I was like I'm not gonna use your typical name brand shampoos because I know all the crap that they put in it um, but I finally got got to a point where in my spirit, I said, you know, my scalp is very irritated. And yes, I can spend all this time trying to figure out what diet changes and things I can make to heal my scalp. But in the meantime, I need to find a way to externally help to soothe my scalp. You know, because I'm sticking to all of these regimens that aren't working for me and my scalp is just feeling inflamed and annoyed and just upset with me and it's reflecting in the way that my hair you know reflects to the world you know because my scalp is not happy with me and um, yes I'm doing all the internal work necessary but I also can't neglect the external and so I said you know what does my scalp need right now? Okay, well clearly it needs some help because of the dandruff and the itchy scalp. What do I know that will work? Hmm, head and shoulders. And so, you know, I did some research as far as I looked into, I watched some YouTube videos, let's be real here. Um, and I found women who had locks 
who had things like seborrheic dermatitis and just severe itchy scalp and dandruff who have locks and use head and shoulders religiously, you know, as often as they need to wash their hair. Um, and they don't have buildup. And they don't feel guilty because they're not using 100% natural ingredients all the time because they realize that their scalp needed something stronger. It needed something medicated um, to kind of help them through whatever phase their scalp is going through. And so I tried it and I found that I loved it and my scalp has never felt this good and I've only used it once you know it's been a few days now since I washed my hair or a couple days or so and typically within a couple days my scalp is already itching um, something else that I changed was I stopped using rose water on my hair I realized that it wasn't working for my scalp yes it works for my face and if I spray it on my body but even sometimes on my face, rose water just naturally tends to dry out my face um, and that's because it's very cleansing. It's something that works really well for combination and oily skin, but if you have dry skin, sometimes it'll be a hit or miss depending on just how your skin reacts to rose water. Um, and so it was drying out my scalp, well not drying out my scalp, but it was, it was irritating my scalp even more, whether it had glycerin or not in it. And um, so I switched and I said, what is the one thing that has always made my scalp feel amazing? And it brought me back to a time when I went to a be went to the beach with my family for like a week and I did nothing but leave my scalp just I had my scalp just sitting in the water in the beach like just floating on my back and just going under the water and just letting this this it literally being at the beach literally healed my scalp then. And I said, "Okay. So if I know that's what works, why what what can how can I how can I recreate that now? Well, obviously I can get some, you know, completely sun-dried sea salt, you know, the salt that they literally take ocean water and dry and, you know, in the sun and let the salt emerge from the water. And I can mix that in with some hot water. And that's what I did. I let it cool, I put it in a spray bottle, and I spray my scalp with it. And my hair stays moisturized without having to use any conditioner or anything like that. Um, my scalp feels really good and that's what I do that's what I'm going to be doing from now on whenever my scalp feels the need to be washed I'm gonna be using my head and doc head and shoulders you know until my scalp no longer needs it and that gives me the time to be able to really tweak my diet and begin to really focus on the inside because I know that the outside the external is being taken care of and so you know that's what I mean when I say it's a journey and it's a process yes you can try and copy everybody else's journey but you have to realize that it's going to be specific to you it literally took me a year just to figure out a regimen that worked for me and at the end of the day it was a regimen that I had to go within myself to realize was there you know I was for the year, the longest time, 365 days, relying on outside sources to tell me what to put on my scalp. When I had already knew within what my scalp needed and I was really kind of being my own adversary, I was being my own hindrance to me being able to experience having my scalp be happy, you know? and. All because I had this whole idea of I have to do things like everybody else and I have to make sure I only use a natural product or everybody's using rose water so it's gonna work for me eventually I just haven't used it long enough and I'm like hold on Shanae it's been a year you've been using it long enough it's not working honey so biggest thing it's a process it's a journey yes watch YouTube videos for motivation or, you know, like I did when I said, you know, I think I really want to try head and shoulders. That's what I'm feeling I need to do. Let me go see if women have tried it with locks and if they have any buildup issues. You know, use it for research. Use it to confirm something you already know. But don't rely on somebody else's journey to tell you or to determine how your journey should play out. You have to let it play out how it's meant to play out. You have to learn the lessons that you need to learn in this specific journey and how you need to care for yourself and how you need to care for your hair and then obviously you end up reflecting that into your life and how you care for others. So biggest lesson overall in this year is it's a process, it's a journey. Um, some things that I now, I mean, just moving on to just things that I would personally recommend, obviously, was, you know, 
find a regimen that works for you and again try things yourself look within yourself and say what is it that I need and like how I experienced with the salt water me realizing that that was the only thing that personally had helped me so don't again don't real don't rely on everybody else's regimen to to find what works for you a lot of times you already know what's going to work for you you already know the answer and you're just looking for validation from others to move forward um, but my best advice would be to just move forward with what you know in your spirit is going to be right for you me personally right now I am what most people would say is semi free form or um, semi form whatever you call it um, so I'm not retwisting anymore that's something that I decided even like a month ago that I wasn't going to retwist anymore because I personally didn't gain anything from it. I, I felt like my my locks don't care to be retwisted. I don't care to see my scalp. Um, I don't need the nice manicured look. That's me. I like my hair to just be. And I actually find that my hair locks quicker at the root when it's not retwisted and I don't even I wasn't even retwisting to begin with I was interlocking and I was interlocking with my fingers so I wasn't using any tools or anything like that um, just very low maintenance to be honest and I got to a point where I just said you know I don't want to retwist anymore I don't want to interlock anymore I just want to let my locks form on their own um, I find that they lock better right at right at the roots like I can I can feel where they're already locking at the roots and I haven't done anything to them, you know, besides wash them and spray, <laughs> spray salt water on them, right? So um, I personally am no longer interlocking or retwisting or maintaining, I guess you can say. Um, if anything, I mean, maybe I'll revisit the idea in six months time. I mean, we'll see. Um, for the most part, if anything I do, I'll wrap hair around a lock if I notice they come out of the lock. Um, but like in the front of my hair, I notice like my baby hairs don't like to be in a lock. And so I just let them be and I just kind of wrap them with my finger and just let them be curly. Like loose natural curly. And I love it. And you know, that's my, that's my hair, that's my locks, that's what they want to do. Yeah, figure out how you want to start your locks and don't, don't go based off of how everybody else's looks. Um, because one person who started out freeform can look, you know, just like somebody who started out with comb coils or twists. Um, so you never know how yours are going to turn out either way. Um, one thing I will say is if you are not going to freeform and you're going to to, um, to start your own by twisting or comb coils, uh, definitely figure out what size you want. When you freeform, you don't really have a choice. Your hair kind of just does what it does. Um, but if you're going to do the semi freeform kind of thing where you're going to, you know, create your own locks, definitely figure out what size you want and realize that they will grow as far as like whatever size your twist is. Typically, the rule of thumb is that they may double in size just depending on, um, you know, how thick your hair is, just depending on your hair because everybody's hair is different. Um, so, my locks, I notice, are continuing to kind of slowly get bigger over time. They're definitely bigger than when they started as far as thickness, um, but they're thickening over time as more and more shed hair is added to them. Um, so if you want thicker locks, make, your, make sure your parts are bigger. Make sure your twists are bigger. If you want skinnier locks, then make sure that you have, obviously, smaller parts. You can retwist or you can interlock. I've done both. I personally loved interlocking just because it was easy for me to do, um, you know, once a month or once every two months and just let it be. Um, I didn't like the idea of having to retwist my hair and then not being able to wash my hair or sweat it out and being worried about my locks untwisting and unraveling. Um, so interlocking works for me. And that's literally just creating a knot. Um, but again, now I've, I'm deciding that I don't want to maintain at all. I'm just going to let them be as far as I'm not going to sit there and have days where I interlock anymore. Um, obviously, I'm still going to wash, still going to spray, and if they look a little crazy, you know, just twist them up a little bit, wrap, um, you know, wrap some hair around whatever lock it belongs to, but beyond that, I'm not doing anything else. Um, 
trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you. Honestly, I would say just jump in full force um, with both feet in because it's going to teach you a lot more than you expect. And again, it's just hair at the end of the day, you know, and when I say it's just hair, it's, you know, you can always grow your hair back out natural if you don't want it to be in locks anymore. I've seen people do it where they just decided, you know, I've gone through whatever journey I needed to and they cut off their locks and they start over. You know, at the end of the day, it's just hair and you have to be okay with not being attached to anything, even your own hair. You know, yes, it's going to take you on a deep journey and you're going to see things deeper but at the same time you also realize that you don't have to be attached to your hair and that it is just hair um, so ultimate thing which is know it's a process know it's a journey appreciate every moment and every bit of it and learn everything you can and always look within to find the answer to your questions because it's going to be there just waiting for you to look for it um, seek and you shall find your answer. You don't have to look to external videos or information for everything that pertains to your lock journey. When you really just go within yourself, you'll know the answer. And honestly, ladies, locks are really simple. It's literally just not combing your hair. Everybody's hair locks up if you don't comb it. It's just the matting of the hair. That's what it is. So you know it's not as complicated as we make it it's really simple if you're somebody who wants to do twists put your hair in twists and don't touch them just keep washing your hair don't touch them if you want a free form just keep washing your hair and don't touch your hair don't comb it you know it's that simple that's how you start them that's what it is it's literally just matted hair and from there your journey begins so with that a cool team my sister i really really hope that this video helped you in some way. Um, I hope that my experience of how long it took me just to go within myself and figure out the truth, uh, I hope that that was a lesson for you to learn as well, just even in life. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the 360 now with the comparative view so that you can see um, how they looked when I first started and how they look now. And I'll try to like insert glimpses as well as how they looked over the, over the months so you can kind of see the um, transformation, I guess. So yeah, with that, a cool team, my sister, I love you and I will see you in the next video. Shalom, shalom.